This is the Biological Molecules Chapter Review. First question, what are the four classes of biological molecules? If you recall, we have carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and finally nucleic acids. The four main classes of biological molecules. Next question, what is this reaction called? First, take note of which direction the arrow is going. It's pointing down, therefore the reaction is starting from the top to the bottom. Is this hydrolysis or is this dehydration? Look at the water. Is the water going into the system? Is it going into the molecules? Or is it coming out of the molecules? And the answer is it's going in. Therefore, it's hydrolysis. Another question that you can ask is, well, is it building or breaking? Is it building or breaking down? Well, you have a, a significantly larger molecule up at the top, and at the bottom you have two smaller molecules. Therefore, we're breaking down. When you add water to a larger molecule, you will break it, you will always break it down. Therefore, this is hydrolysis. If you want to build a molecule from smaller molecules, then you would have to take out water and to, to mend the two molecules together, and that would be dehydration, not hydrolysis. In this, in this example, this is hydrolysis, adding water to break down molecules. The next question, what biological category do these molecules belong to? Well, they look like soccer ball patches. However, if you notice that the molecule on the top, it's the two monosaccharides attached together are not fused together. However, there is an oxygen in between. Therefore, this these are carbohydrates, and whereas steroids are, the molecules are fused together, so keep those two straight. These are carbohydrates. And you can go even further and ask yourself, well, that the, the, the top molecule is, a, um, is not a monomer, but a polymer. It's a disaccharide. And the ones at the bottom are not polymers, but they are monomers. More specifically, these are monosaccharides. Another question, what biological category does this molecule belong to? It might at first look like it's a, a, a hydrocarbon, a, 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 fat, a lipid. However, there are nitrogens in here. Take a look at the functional groups. On the left, you have amino group. On the right, you have the carboxyl group. Automatically, that means that this is an amino acid, and this belongs to the category proteins. What biological category does this molecule belong to? Take a look at the repeating subunits. Up at the top, you have a yellow, orange, green. Yellow, orange, the next one is red yellow, orange, purple, or magenta, yellow, orange, purple. Each of those groups are nucleotides. The nucleotides are repeating subunits over and over and over. Repeating nucleotides would make up a nucleic acid. What are the, um, what makes up a nucleotide, every single nucleotide? One phosphate, you see the P in there, the yellow, one five carbon sugar, and some kind of nitrogen containing base. And that's the green, the, the pink, the purple that you see in the middle. What biological category does this molecule belong to? Aha, this looks like what we've seen at the beginning, monosaccharides or carbohydrates. However, these rings are fused together. 
there isn't an oxygen in between or some molecule in between. No, they are fused together. Well, four fused rings together automatically makes this structure some kind of steroid, like cholesterol. Therefore, this belongs to the main category, lipids. Well, give me three facts about this molecule. Okay, now we're talking hydrocarbons. Long, long, long chain lipids. This is a saturated fat. How can you tell? Because there are no double bonds. If you have no double bonds, then you can't add any more hydrogens. It's said to be saturated with hydrogens. You can't pack any more hydrogens in this molecule. Therefore, this is a saturated fat. And since it's a saturated fat, that would make this um, solid at room temperature. Another fact, solid at room temperature with no double bonds. Okay, well, give me three facts about this molecule. Now I see two double bonds. That means that I can actually, I could actually break those double bonds and add in two more on the left and two more on the right. I could actually add in four more hydrogens because each carbon can bond up to four times. That would make this an unsaturated fat or some kind of oil um, or liquid at room temperature. And on top of it, we can ask another question. Is this a cis fatty acid or a trans as fatty acid. Well, you take a look at the double bond on the left, then you took a, take a look at the chain to the left of the bo double bond, and you'll see that it's, it will be on the same side of the double bond as the chain, all the rest of the chain on the right side of the double bond. Therefore, this is a cis fatty acid. What are the three carbohydrate monomers? What's another name for carbohydrate monomers? The answer is monosaccharides. And the answer is glucose, fructose, and galactose. Glucose, fructose, galactose. Make sure to remember those three monosaccharides. And what are three carbohydrate molecules that contain two monomers each? The answer is sucrose, maltose, and lactose. These are disaccharides. Each of these molecules are made up of two repeating monosaccharides. I'm not going to expect you to, to be able to recognize structurally the difference between glucose, fructose, galactose, and sucrose, maltose, and lactose. However, I will expect you to know that sucrose is made up of one glucose and one fructose, and maltose is made up of one glucose and another glucose. And finally, that lactose is made up of one glucose and one galactose. So keep those straight, keep the names straight. Remember that glucose, fructose, and galactose are monosaccharides. Sucrose, maltose, and lactose are disaccharides. And remember which monosaccharides makes up which disaccharides. Now, on to functional groups. Make sure that you remember the names and that you can recognize the, diff the different functional groups structurally. The O and the H, that's a hydroxyl group. This is hydroxyl group. And this functional group is, well, you got the CO, the C-O-O-H. This is a carboxyl group. And how about this one? The C double bond with an O, carbonyl group. Make sure to remember all the different functional groups. Okay, what are the four polysaccharides? 
there's glycogen, starch, cellulose, and chitin. Okay, well, which two would we get the most energy out of? Or, in other words, which of those polysaccharides are energy-storing molecules? The answer is starch is an energy-storing molecule, and glycogen is an energy-storing molecule. Cellulose, or fiber, is a structural type of polysaccharide. And chitin is what the exoskeleton of insects are made up of. Chitin. Back to functional groups. Do you remember what this C plus uh, the double bonded to an O is? Do you, do you remember? This is carbonyl group. Okay, well, how are these two molecules similar? What does the one on the left have in common with the one on the right? Look at the HN2 or H3N, the H2N. These are the amino groups. Amino group, the left one has an amino group, and the right one has an amino group. And you look at the, the carboxyl group, the COOH. The left one has a carboxyl group, and the right one has a carboxyl group. The molecule on the right is just missing the hydrogen, but it's still considered the carboxyl functional group. If you would add the H to that, then you would take away that little negative sign, and uh, it's the same exact thing. Well, how is a tertiary protein different from a quaternary protein? How are they different? Tertiary proteins are folded over each other, folded, 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 folded. But a quaternary protein is made up of several tertiary subunits, just like hemoglobin. Which repeating subunit do all nucleic acids have? We touched on this, if you recall. All nucleic acids have repeating nucleotides made up of one phosphate, a five carbon sugar, and some kind of nitrogen containing base. Last question. Differentiating between a nucleic acid structure and a monosaccharide structure may be difficult. And the reason is because there, is, there are parts of, of those two molecules that look the same. But there are other parts of the structures that would allow you to differentiate between them. So, don't, so keep them straight. There is a 5-carbon sugar in a nucleic acid, and some monosaccharides are made, are made up of 5-carbon um, structures, sugars. So they can't, they, parts of them look the same. However, nucleic acid has two more repeating parts of a subunit, the phosphate and some kind of nitrogen-containing base. This concludes the review for biological molecules.